put some lotion on my hands. I just realized how dry them things were. You know how it be when you get out the shower. So, I see the dude bad news, like, creeping up behind me, bro. Like, he squatted down, you know, like, like somebody about to attack, bro. He was squatted down and creeping up towards me, and he got his hand in his pocket. So when I seen him and I realized what was going on, I hurry up and turn all the way. I turned my body 100% to him. And I was looking at him. I'm like, what's up? And he stood up. He stopped doing the creeping. He was probably about a good six feet in front of me. When I turned, I was like, what's up, bro? He stopped creeping. He took his hand out of his pocket. You know I'm looking straight at his hand. He didn't have nothing in his hand. He was like, you tried me like a bitch. You tried me like a because I was in the hole. Then he put his hand on his pocket, but he didn't put it in there. But I'm looking at him now. He put his hand on his pocket. So I'm just looking at him. I'm not saying nothing. I'm really just sizing him up, looking him straight in his eye. He put his hand back inside his pocket. He took one step closer to me. I reached and grabbed my net bag off the table. My net bag is full of dirty clothes. I had forgot to put it in the laundry bucket. So I was getting ready to take it to the laundry room that morning and just drop it off and have them wash it for me. And then it'll come back to the to the dorm in a regular time and like it usually do. I didn't have no candy bar on me. I usually leave out when I'm going to the work detail. I usually take what they call a walk piece with me. I think I told you all about that. It's basically it's hard, but it's not metal. So when you go through the metal detector, it won't never go off. I usually have a walk piece with me, but the one I had, I had, I had to throw it the other day because they was like physically patting everybody down and I had it in my pocket so I had to throw it the other day and I wasn't really studying it no more and I was I just hadn't got another one I was intending on getting another one but I just hadn't got around to it yet so I grabbed my net bag because you know this is full of clothes the net bag is thick it's like that thick so I'm like if he swing the candy bar at me he really got one good swing because you know whatever direction he go to come in I'm gonna just use the net bag you know get it once he hit the net bag i'm gonna just beat him so i already had that planned out of my mind he stick his hand back in his pocket i'm like listen bro i'm not about to be going through this with you bro i already told you i did business straight up this dude sat here and told you to your face that he took the eight dollars out of there bro what is you talking about he was like oh no i ain't know that i ain't know that so I'm like, yeah, dude, yeah, he, I mean, I knew he was told, but it's like, now I know you told for real. You telling me you didn't know that when the man sat here and told you this to your face. So now I'm thinking this is some type of image he's trying to keep up because maybe he done told somebody, oh, I'm butt CB with the candy bar when I get out of the hole. So he's trying to make it look like he ran up on me. Little dude, he know he about to get spanked in his childhood. The staff at the prison so crooked, but it's two sergeants standing right here probably like 10 feet on this side of me running chow but the line done died down everybody sat down and we're standing here facing off man got his hand in his pocket i look over here they looking straight at us ain't nobody said nothing you know what i'm saying which is cool with me but it's just like that's crazy at the same time he like i didn't know that i'm like bro how did you not know that when dude told you to your face what do you mean he told you to your face and i'm like bro i really don't appreciate you Clutching right now, you know, clutching is just when he holding on to the candy bar. I'm like, I really don't appreciate you clutching, bro. Then you was just really trying to creep up on me, like, like, like you were finna try to squirrel me or something. You were finna try to sneak me or something, but what you got going on? So he pulled his hand back out of his pocket. He don't got nothing in his pocket. He said, No, you tried me like a bitch. You tried me like a He get loud. So I looks over there at the table he came from. It's like two or three young dudes sitting there. They all staring straight at me. But the way they're looking, I could tell it's a situation like if it pop off, we're going to ride with bad news. I fully understood that. So now I go to looking at the other tables. I'm trying to scan to see if I see any of my guys in there. So I see like two of them in there. So when I look over there at the table, they looking at me like, What's up? So I didn't give them no type of signal that nothing about to go down because I'm really like, you know, it is what it is. I look back to the dude. I'm like, bro, what is you talking about, bro? So I go to talking about the food again. He cut me off while I'm talking. He said, man, I'm not studying that food. I'm not even talking about none of that no more. 
I'm like, well, what is you talking about? He like, man, I'm talking about how you tried me. You gonna get my bros a letter talking about I said I'm finna snitch on you, knowing you lying, knowing I ain't said no sh like that. You tried me like a. So I looked the man straight in his eyes. I'm like, bro. So you didn't send me a letter telling me that you gonna bust me with the candy bar, and if you can't get to me, you gonna send your snitches on me. I said, so you gonna look me in my eyes. One on one and tell me you didn't send me no letter like that. He said, man, you got me duck. You got me duck. He put his hand back in his pocket. Now I'm looking at his pocket. I'm trying to see if I could see any frame or, you know, just any type of anything where it looks as if a candy bar is in there. I don't see nothing. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, the flat pieces, you might not see nothing because it's flat. And then the, the thick stitching on the side of the pans that they give you in the prison, that could cover it up. So I'm not going based off of all that 100%. So he's like, man, you got me up. So I'm like, now I'm asking you a straight up question. Did you? Did I lie on you? Did I lie on you, though? That's my only question. You can say, CBS said I'm a snitch. CBS said I'm this. CBS said I'm that. But did I lie on you? As long as I ain't lied on you, I'm cool. I'm cool with whatever I said, as long as I know I ain't lied on you. I'm like, so did I lie on you, though? Like, yeah, you lied on me. Yeah, you lied on me. So he go to screaming and calling me out my name and all this and that. But the two sergeants that was standing right there was another door that goes through the other side of the child hall. Now, one of the sergeants didn't like me. We used to get into it all the time because um, she said I had a smart-ass mouth. It's not that, it's just that she used to try to handle me and deal with me in any kind of way. And, um, you know, I didn't allow that. When you try to handle me a certain type of way, I straighten it out. Or if you talk crazy to me, I'll let you know, like, hey, listen, don't just treat me like like I'm, I'm bottom of the dirt. Cause I'm a grown man. I'm still a human being, whether I'm in prison or not. And she didn't like that. She used to like people to bow down to her. Bro, I look over at these two sergeants. They both walk through the other side of the child hall, locked the door. So they just left out of here 100%. So it's like they seen what was going down and they just walked out like they wanted something to happen. So now in my mind, I know for a fact it's about to pop. It is what it is. I don't even care no more. So the dude squirrel that's sitting right here, he's sitting right here eating some cereal. I tap him on the shoulder. I'm like, hey, bro. So he look up at me like, what's up? I'm like, man, get your brother, bro. Go on, get your brother, bro, for, for this go somewhere else. Get your brother. So he looked back at him. He turned his head, finished eating. He mumbles to me and say, I don't f with that. So I'm like, damn. So he's like, you got me? No. Yeah, you lied on me. So I was like, hey, listen, bro. I don't, I don't know what to tell you, bro. I wasn't trying to provoke him because I didn't have a candy bar on me. I wasn't worried about people in the chow hall looking at me and be like, Oh, he just called CBL up and he ain't do nothing about it because I don't care about that, brother. That's that you saying that ain't doing nothing to me. Now, if it was a setting where I feel like I had more control, I probably would have responded different. But, you know, he got the candy bar on him, it looks like. So I'm not really trying to place myself in a situation where he go trying to stab me. I'm prepared for it, but I'm trying to keep it from going there until I can get right. So I'm sitting here humbly talking to him. I'm like, listen, bro, that's the kite they sent me. So now I'm finessing it, acting as if it could have been a misunderstanding. I'm, I'm, I'm really capping right now. I'm finessing the situation, acting like, damn, dude who brought you the food, he knew he was in the wrong, so maybe he wrote that letter and gave it to me and acted like it was from you, but I know it was from him, bro. I know his hand right there. So when I went to saying that, he so slow. He was like, yeah, that's what he did. That's what he probably did, because I ain't never wrote no letter saying nothing like that. I'm really just finessing it, trying to get him to, you know, don't try to stab me. Now. So I'm like, yeah, bro, that, that probably what happened, bro. Woo -woo -woo -woo. So he was like, I'm like, a matter of fact, bro, about them $8, don't even worry about it. I'm going to straighten it out, bro. When I go back to the dorm, when I get off work, I'm going to give you them $8. Don't even worry about it. So he was like, all right, all right, bro, all right. So pulled his hand out of his pocket. He went and sat down, finished eating. I'm still standing up. Both of the doors locked, then that third door going that way locked. So I'm looking this way, looking for the officer. So I walk over there because I'm trying to leave out the child hall. But, you know, I'm still looking over my shoulder watching dude. So I go looking for the officer. So I go hit the glass. 
So the one that don't rock with me, she come up to the glass. She looks straight past me and look over there to the dude. Now. She looks at me and say, what? With a grin on her face. I'm like, man, I'm trying to leave out the child hall. She unlocks the door. She unlocks the door coming through to where I'm at. And she's still looking past me. She haven't looked at me once. Now I'm curious. So I look past me. I look back. When I look back, bad news and these other two dudes that were sitting at the table looking at me, standing up, slowly walking this way. These are the only people standing up, bro. Slowly walking this way. So I look over there at my guys. They stand up. They come walking this way, kind of towards where I was at, but not the same way bad news no was walking. They was walking like on this side. So they still on the side where I'm at. So it was another tray hanging out the flap that ain't nobody never got just with breakfast on it. But it's a thick brown tray. It's like this thick, like that long. It's a thick tray. You hit somebody with it, they're in trouble. It was hanging out the tray flap. So I grabbed the tray out the flap. As soon as I grabbed the tray, the the, the lady, the sergeant, gonna look at me and say, uh-uh, uh-uh, we ain't running no more trays. Put that tray back in the flap. Uh-uh, you ain't finna eat. Put that tray back in the flap. So I know what's going on here now. She cool with dude, I guess. That's just what I'm making up in my head. She cool with dude. She already don't like me. Dude done told her he gonna bust me. So she trying to let him do it. So I'm trying to show her that I don't care about the food on the tray. I take the tray. <clears throat> turn it sideways and hit it against the thing. Knock all the food off of it. All the food fall on the floor. So I said, I don't give a damn about that tray. I ain't trying to eat. So she like, what you got a tray in your hand for? So I look over, bad news, and the other two dudes still walking towards me. So now I done held the tray like this. I got, like, the tray in my hand, like, the long way. Because now I'm like, I'm just about to go to swinging at four heads now. That's what I'm about to do. So he walk up like he talking to her. He walk past me. But they looking at me. So I walk over here. I walk over here. I'm talking to my guys. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what they got going on. I think they I think they want to pop, but they just don't want it to be head up. They want to try to sneak me. That's what it is. And I think Sergeant such and such big stank himself trying to assist them and let them do it. So that's why she keep tripping on me about the tray. So she come walking this way to where I'm at, where the door for us to leave at. And she got her keys like she finna unlock the door. And she said, man, you need to put that tray back in that flat before I open this door. So I look at bad news now. They slowly walking this way, bro. So I'm like, just open the door and I'm going to put the tray back. She's like, no, you need to put the tray back because ain't no tray coming out this child hall. I'm like, I'm not going to take it out the child hall, but just open the, unlock the door and then I'm going to put the tray back in the flap. So she's like, man, I'm not opening no door until you put that tray down. One of my guys that was standing right there, the two guys, one of them was a white boy. and He was all the way built like that. He was like, fam, I got the fire on me. You straight. I got my fire on me. You can put it down. So... I put the tray back in the thing and I whispered to him. I'm like, bro, you ready to bust it or what? Matter of fact, go on, give it to me. Go on, give it to me. But she was watching us so closely, he couldn't even give it to me. So we stepped out. She unlocked the door. We stepped out of the child. He was like, bro, you good. You good, bro. I'm going to show you, bro. See, he had another situation I'll speak on another day where they basically were saying he went out bad. So it's like now he was at the point he just trying to prove his loyalty to the guys because he was a white boy. He was trying to prove his point like, bro, I'm sliding with you. I got love for you. I'm rocking with you. So he was like, nah, bro, when I told him give it to me, he like, nah, bro, you good, bro. You good. Anything happened, I'm about to go crazy out here. He done pulled it out once we got outside. But it's like they run chow at 430 in the morning, so it's pitch black out here. It's us three. We walking this way. Bad news and the other two come behind us. She locked the door again. I hear the door locked. So now it's just us six out here on the walk. We're the only inmates out here, pitch black. So we walking. They like a little distance behind us. So I'm like, bro, bump that, bro. We, we not about to be doing this, bro. So we stopped and turned around. Just stood there, bro. Got the file. He got his arm crossed too. He got it in his arm like this. So I'm like, bad news, what's up, bro? He was like, what's up, CB? I'm like, I'm saying, what's going on? We straight or what? He like, oh yeah, we straight. I'm like, so I'm saying, what the business is? What 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 is y'all following me for, bro? He like, man, ain't nobody following you, bro. Ain't nobody following you. So he makes a big scene, done stuck his hand in his pocket again. So the white boy done uncrossed his arms and went trying to run down on bad news. 
So bad news kind of run back. So I grabbed the white boy by the shirt. I'm like, nah, hold up, hold up, hold up. I pulled him back this way. Now coming down, because now we're on the walk. And like going straight up the walk is another gate with an administration building. That coming down was officers that was just getting ready to come on the shift, like the sergeant, the supervisor. They coming down on the thing, so now he go to scream, "Hey, what, what y'all inmates out here doing?" Woo -doo 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 -doo. So we just hurry up and walk and go get back to our dorm. So I got it made up in my mind now. What I'm gonna do to avoid a big situation popping off where people got to get hit with the candy bar. I'm just about to go to bad news, bad news dorm, and I'm gonna shoot him a one, right? I'm gonna just fight him. I'm gonna try to the best of my ability to beat his ass real quick, and just prove to him like, bro, this 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 ain't you know what I'm saying? This ain't this ain't what you wanna do, bro. To avoid anybody from getting stabbed, we could just get this little one out the way, and we'll be straight. I go to the I go to the work detail. I'm working, man. They got me busy all day. I'm thinking about this. This on my mind all day. So we don't finish up to like 5 or 6 p.m. So I get back to the dorm. I called the little blood dude that I gave a letter to. I'm like, hey, bro, what's up, bro? Because he had told me bad news wasn't even supposed to be a part of their set no more. That he was supposed to get kicked out. So I'm like, bro, what's up, bro? So he like, yeah, I talked to the big homie, bro. He said, bad news official. We can't kick him off the set. So he said, I mean, he official, bro. I can't do nothing to him. So I'm like, so you telling me that snitching is against the gang's rules and you're telling me this man told me he would snitch on me and get my phone knocked off and you can't do nothing about that? That's what you're telling me? So he was like, bro, I'm just saying, bro, I'm just doing what the big bros told me to do. So I said, all right, well, I want to shoot bro one. We need to go and line this up real quick. I want to shoot him a one first thing in the morning when we can come out the dorms again. Cause a man just tried to clutch on me this morning like he was finna try to bust me or something and i just want to go on I'm, I'm trying not to turn this into a big situation where a lot of people got to get involved so let's just avoid that and, and i'll shoot him a one and we'll get it over with so he was like all right i'm gonna holler at him he was like man in the morning what time you coming out i'm like bro you know i got the job up there so i could come out at any time early as early as i want to come out in the morning i could come out i just got a cap like i'm about to go to work so he like, all right, when you see them run my dorm, the chow, just come out. We're going to go to chow. So I'm like, all right. So now I done put a couple guys in my dorm on point because I'm like, all right, look, bro. I'm about to go shoot bad news this one, but I'm going out to breakfast with such and such dorm. So y'all come with me just in case these dudes try to do some slick stuff or whatever. So now we done came out of dorm. It's like, it's three of us. That same white boy, he was in my dorm. He was finessing to get an extra tray that morning. He wasn't even supposed to be mixed in with that dorm. He was in my dorm, and it was another dude came out with me. Another dude or two. It was like three, four of us. So we walked out there, met them at the chow hall. We met up with dude. He had like two of his guys with him. We walked all the way around to go to Bad News Dorm. We finessed the officer to let us on the yard, and we went inside the dorm. We went inside the dorm. Everybody looking at us crazy like, the hell they doing in here? Dude went to scream, say Bad News. Bad news. Say bad news. Bad news. So I already got my mind made up. I done told my guys. I'm cracking my knuckles. I'm like, bro, I'm about to spank this baby. I promise you, I'm about to beat the brakes off this little boy. If anything flaky, bro, anything, anybody look like they about to jump in it, anybody look like they finna go to clutching anything, bust, bro, pop off the dribble. So when we walked in the dorm, you got my guys that lives in this dorm that came up to us like, bro, what's up, y'all straight? And then you had they guys that came up to them like, what's up, bro, y'all straight? So I'm putting everybody on point. I'm like, yeah, bro, such as I'm about to beat the brakes off bad news. And if anything go left, y'all pop. Y'all pop off the dribble. If anything go wrong, pop. So they like, all right, all right, all right. And then he's screaming bad news. He asked dude, he like, man, what bad news is it? Dude said he transferred last night. He went to another prison. They transferred. And I felt like right then and there, bro, I knew that I was out of character for even going to the dorm doing that because I ain't had no business doing that because he could have popped and went crazy. There's other ways I could have dealt with that. But I feel like what I learned out of this is, bro, just go with your first mind. Whatever your first mind, your first gut is telling you, you're not wrong, bro. You don't got to second guess yourself. You don't need other people's opinions. You can go with your first mind and be perfectly fine. If I would have went with my first mind, none of this would have ever happened because 
as soon as he came to me and said, dude, want to do business with you and his name is Bad News, my first mind was telling me, do no business with nobody that refers to themselves as Bad News. So I just wanted to tell y'all, bro, whenever you're in a situation in life that your first mind is telling you no or yes, and you know if it's saying no, but you go against it, it could be a detrimental outcome, but just go with your first mind and say no. Because, you know, what if it wouldn't have played out like that? What if I wouldn't have turned around when he was creeping up and he would have just went to hit me in the neck with the candy, but could have took my life in there. So you just got to go with your first mind, bro. And I encourage everybody, man, make money, not, uh, make money, not excuses. Stay out of trouble. Stay out these streets. Don't be trying to get caught up in the street life because it's lame as hell. It's not worth your freedom. is not worth nothing. And it's your boy Bill. I'm gone.